I'm Robert Scoble and we're here at the IBM Almaden Research Center, which is actually where the hard drive, among other things, was developed. But here we're going to see the future of batteries that could be used to power the car of the future. So, who, I, who are you? My name is Winfried Wilke. I'm the head of the Nanoscale Science and Technology. And one project in this organization, which a lot of, of excitement created by it, is this lithium air super battery. Its the goal is very specifically to create a battery which is capable to drive a typical family car for about 500 miles that's where the name Battery 500 comes from, between recharges. Today's batteries, which are the best ones, are lithium-ion batteries, fall short of this goal by quite a factor. There are cars like the Tesla, which can actually go about 200 to 140 miles, but they are basically battery on wheels. It's about half a ton for 150 kilograms in that small sports car. So that's not practical for something which is sold by the millions. So one needs to go to new chemical technologies to make that. The one which we are focusing on is called lithium air battery. And all this compared with the Mount Everest, it's the highest energy density of any imaginable system. But it's also not easy to do. It's a long-term project. It's currently in its early science phases. But we, particularly in the last six or seven months, we have gotten a lot of good results, which make me cautiously optimistic that this can actually work. Um, the basic idea here t behind it is the following. The metric which we really want to optimize is how many watt hours, how much energy, can be stored in say one liter or one kilogram or one pound of a battery. In today's lithium ion batteries, the weight is nearly all in the cathode of a battery, which is typically an oxide of a pretty heavy metal like manganese or cobalt. Explain what a cathode is for a yeah. for oh, a because yes. a lot of people haven't yes. studied right. chemistry for a while. Okay. Yeah, every, all batteries really have three components in it. An anode, a cathode, and an electrolyte, which connects the two. The electrolyte is usually a, flu a fluid. And chemical reactions then occur between the cathode and the anode, mitigated by the electrolyte in between, to allow to discharge the battery, which is called a primary battery. And if you're also able to recharge it, when it's called a secondary battery. And in chemistry class, we put a a cathode and electrode in a lemon, for instance, yes, you exactly. can store a little charge yes. in the lemon. Right? A simple battery is easy to build, just exactly takes something we should say acidic uh, and put two different metals in it and voila, you have a primary battery. The first batteries actually were invented around 250 BC wow. in what is now Baghdad. As archaeologists found what clearly was a battery, we don't know what it was used for. So it's not a new technology, but in nevertheless, it's really challenging technology. It really pushes technology to the limit. So going back to what the basic idea is, why we think when we can drastically increase the energy density, it's basically is to make it lighter. And you make it lighter by getting rid of these heavy transition metal oxides like cobalt oxide or manganese oxide and replace it with a lightweight, high surface carbon structure. Okay. That's where our nanotechnology comes into the picture. Yeah. So the rag, what really happens is, in one of the two possible forms of such lithium-ion battery, is that during discharge, when the car is driving, the lithium ions, which come from lithium metal, the yeah. anode, combine with the oxygen, from which we borrow from the atmosphere, and the two form a new compound called lithium peroxide. That's a reaction product. So the battery fills up with that stuff while you drive. For that was the discharge driving part. For the recharging part, you basically run the movie backwards. 
We apply an external voltage which then pulls this lithium peroxide apart and releases the oxygen back into the atmosphere. Okay. But for us, as you have seen before, this gives also a clear handle if this recharging actually occurs. If it occurs, we better see oxygen coming out of a battery while we are uh, recharging it. And, and that's it why you have this device that... To measure the gases coming out. Okay. And it turned out that the first attempts, nothing but uh, no oxygen came out, carbon dioxide. But we pretty quickly were able to solve this problem by in using new electrolytes, which were very different than electrolytes used in lithium ion. And now we get 100% oxygen coming out. Yeah. How do you find those new? You know, how do you come up with? Oh, I think I'll use this. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a mixture. Well, I'm not a chemist, but the chemists have an amazing intuition what might work. So we, it's a combination of what's sometimes called the Edisonian approach, trying out things chemical intuition and in our case we also heavily use supercomputers to model down to the atomic level what is happening as say lithium ions and oxygen molecules interact with various candidate electrolytes and it turns out that key insights happen pretty at the same time as the supercomputer modeling and here in the lab so this is a very powerful uh, way and someone could call it in venture capital world an unfair advantage we have to use these computers. So I, uh, there's about 30 labs doing battery research yeah. around the world. Does any other lab have that kind of Yeah, advantage? in fact, we, we are closely working with Department of Energy, U.S. National Laboratories. We are using actually U.S. government lab uh, computers as well as IBM internal machines. They are actually IBM built machines yep. in the labs. Um, and, but this machine here, which you have just seen a moment ago, is, has been crucial to release breakthroughs and that has been built here and we are the only ones at the moment which have that machine. Quite a number of people all in all working on it. Um, there's a number of people who work full time on it and uh, about half a bit more than half of the team works part-time, that's how we organize things. The best way, it's the best way to efficiently use, say, the skills of an expert in X-ray diffraction or a nuclear magnetic resonance. So you have it, we have a whole alphabet soup of machines uh, like this, which we're using for that. So this is the Alma, then team where we most of the experiments in IBM are done. Then we have the National uh, Battery 500 Coalition, which involves four of the big U.S. national labs, which are Oak Ridge, Argonne, Pacific Northwest, and Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory. And then we have now collaboration with several large industrial companies who are also participating yeah. uh, in the project. So I'm just amazed how from an idea this exploded into a major coalition and research project. When are we going to see your work in a car? In a, well, let me say first, I hope in the three years to have a quite substantial lithium air battery in the in a laboratory, something of that size, but storing many kilowatt hours. Uh, but it is always a huge step to go from something which works in the lab to the engineering, the safety and the cost and so on and so on. I think it's, I will be happy if it comes it's in a car which you can buy in 2020, prototypes earlier. Well, cool. Can we follow you anywhere on the web? Um, mostly we're publishing in scientific journals, but there is a conference series which was a byproduct of all of this called Beyond Lithium Ion. So Google either beyond yeah beyond lithium ion conferences. The next one will be in June in Washington State, Pacific Northwest. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you very much, Robert. Right thank you. It was a pleasure talking okay. with you. Mm -hmm. so some of the cells that we have here, for example, this might be interesting uh, yeah. where we can see the typical cell where we do the reactions. That is shown here. One example. What you are seeing here is uh, oxygen being uh, slowly bubbled into the electrolyte 
and we have uh, a potential stat which essentially does uh, uh, what monitor what is happening inside this uh, cell so this is a typical place where we assemble lithium air cells because uh, lithium is very reactive uh, with atmosphere you have to have very controlled atmosphere to build the cell so this is uh, this is a glove box which is filled with argon and uh, classically what we use is uh, coin cells uh, typical to that uh, similar to what people do in hearing aid batteries where I'm showing here is actually a commercial sink air where once you take the tab off you can actually expose the battery and it starts uh, gaining potentials and you can discharge the cell similar to this uh, what we do is we assemble uh, coin cells uh, using uh, the materials that are shown are right there and this is a tool for making that so this is another part of the uh, the glove box so this is specifically uh, for making uh, electrolytes which means that we don't want to contaminate the other box with metallic lithium so here we have all the chemicals that are required for making the cell so once we have all the chemicals we take this and then take it inside the other uh, place to assemble the cell so this is typically what you have in here those are the uh, cells for example the air cells right which we assemble so you put in your electrode anode cathode in there and uh, then put this for this and then you pass in oxygen oxygen through the top of the cell and we have we connect it somewhere here like this so you plug this out once again i can uh, briefly explain uh, the, the principles that we're we're trying to uh, study here uh, everything that we we've uh, built in this lab really is uh, to fundamentally characterize the, the chemistries that are occurring within our lithium air cells uh, key to that, to, to, to that end goal would be uh, this, exper uh, this experimental setup right here. Uh, this is a differential electrochemical mass spectrometer, or as I like to call it, a, a lithium air battery breathalyzer. So what we can do here is analyze quantitatively uh, the, the amount of gases that are uh, consumed during a discharge in our battery and the amount of gases that are uh, evolved on recharge of our battery. And so, uh, for example, if, if uh, we, we know that oxygen is uh, consumed in, in, in our battery uh, initially, and uh, we'd like to have all that oxygen that was uh, consumed during discharge be evolved uh, on re recharge. And so we can, we can study uh, uh, the, uh, the, the chemistry, the, the gas-based chemistry of our, our cells uh, in a, a very effective uh, manner with, with this uh, setup over here. So what we see right here are uh, two batteries that are currently discharging on our on our uh, our dem setup here. Uh, what we can do is take uh, gases which we we have in these uh, these different uh, lecture bottles in the back here. We can take any gas that, that we like. We have right now uh, oxygen and argon hooked up to our our system, and we can pass it through the headspace of our battery, and we can control precisely how much uh, gas goes through the the headspace of our battery. Uh, we can also test uh, the gases that are evolved uh, in our battery by sending it to uh, this uh, instrument here, our, our mass spec, uh, which uh, essentially gives us information on uh, what type of uh, gases are uh, in, in this uh, in, in these cells. Uh, a spectrometer, yeah, okay. mass spectrometer, oh, yeah. Okay. And so, uh, by sending gases, by by letting these batteries discharge and then recharge, we can we can uh, test the head spaces of, of the the gases by uh, by sending those gases out uh, into the mass spec. My my next step would be to take the batteries off of this system, uh, disassemble them, and then study uh, study what has occurred to each one of the electrodes, and also what occurred uh, to the electrolytes as well. And so we we have all the capability that we need here at uh, this research center. Uh, to uh, do a very good uh, a chemical analysis of uh, what's occurring uh, in, these, in these batteries and on the electrodes.